ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be our Our next speaker is Dr. Ann Werner, who is an associate professor at the Department of Construction School of Engineering at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. Her research uh, is in the area of construction materials and sustainability, and she is talking today about who is Carl, Carl Menzel. Let's welcome Dr. Ann Werner. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to the session. For those that have done uh, concrete flat work or hot weather concreting or even decorative concrete, you've probably seen this nomograph. It's used to determine the evaporation rate from a horizontal surface, and it helps to predict the uh, potential for plastic shrinkage cracking. You may have also come across the name Carl Menzel. Uh, he developed a formula that was used in part in the uh, development of the nomograph. A couple years ago, I was working on a project that involved plastic shrinkage cracks, and I was doing a literature review, and I came across a reference uh, to a set of um, boxes of Carl Menzel's documents that are in the archives at the University of Illinois. And I said to myself at the time, because I'd seen his name so many times, I thought, one of these days I'm going to go check out those boxes and, and find out who is Carl Menzel. So I did that this summer. There is the doors to the archives at the University of Illinois Main Library, and those are the two boxes. So I went there, uh, the archivist pulled the boxes out of... Um, the bowels of the library, put them on a table, uh, told me to wear white gloves if I touched any of the photographs, and um, have at it. So I spent a day going through these two boxes, which it turned out uh, the documents were put together by Carl Menzel. I think uh, one of his nephews asked about what he had done for a living, <laughs> and, and he, you know, he, he started pulling all, all these documents that he'd saved over the years, and he put them together. So it's really a nice set of documents, made my life easier. So I found out about Carl Menzel. He was born in 1894 in uh, Chicago, Illinois. He went to the uh, Institute of Technology in Chicago, and then he ended up at the University of Illinois and graduated in 1917 with a BS in mechanical engineering. And I just want to point out, because I actually was a draftsman for a little bit of time, he spent time um, while he was in school as a draftsman and a machinist, and I think um, his background in drafting and machining um, really helped him throughout his career. After he graduated, he went to go work at the Forest Projects Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin, and he spent time studying drying and shrinkage of wood, which really has not a lot to do with cement, <laughs> but I'll get to that part in a minute. Um, what he really focused on was determining the uh, moisture content of the wood in the kilns, and so he did a lot of designing of apparatus to be able to test wood. He was one of the first to uh, do experiments on drying wood with electricity. And he was also involved in, uh, with other people at the laboratory, um, figuring out how to stabilize wood propellers for World War I, which was occurring at this time. There's the group that worked on the propellers and Carl Menzel. So while he was there with another person, he uh, submitted his first patent, and it was for a wet bulb that's used in the kiln or other areas that are inaccessible for determining um, the moisture content of wood products. And this was later um, sold by a company, a uh, Foxborough company, and I guess this is their representative kiln boy. I thought it was kind of a little cute drawing. Common in that time, 1920s, 1930s. So the person he developed this product uh, with was Albert Herman. They were granted the patent in 1924, and as I said, um, it was later taken by the Foxborough Company, um, and they developed it and sold it. And in Carl Menzel's words, the porous sleeve wet bulb that he developed with Albert Herman uh, was useful for determining hum relative humidity in inaccessible locations, such as kilns. And uh, there's the apparatus that the, um, the equipment was used in. And then this is a kiln, uh, actually it's a rayon dryer, but it's typical of what they would have used that equipment in. 
So then uh, Carl applied to work at the Underwriters Laboratory in Chicago, Illinois, and you can see that this is a handwritten letter that he had in his boxes of documents. I know it's hard to remember, but there used to be a day when people used typewriters, and it looks like Carl prepared all of his letters and, and official documents he wrote by hand, and so there were quite a few of those in the archive documents, and then he later typed them when he got it just the way he wanted it. So this is that handwritten document, and he's writing a letter to the Underwriters Laboratory saying, I'm an engineer employed uh, currently at the Forest Products Laboratory, and he's asking for a job at the um, underwriters because he wants to move closer to his family, which got me thinking, well, what kind of family did Carl have? Uh, in 1923, he married his wife, Regina, and they ended up having two children, Alberta and David. And then just to give a little personal side of Carl, um, he um, liked to golf, fish, swim. He liked photography and what I found really interesting, the study of solar energy. He also was very involved with his community. He was involved in his church, uh, he was a mason, and he also uh, ended up being chairman of the Water Drainage and Sanitation Committee in his hometown of Homewood, Illinois. He was a village trustee and secretary of the Homewood Board of Local Improvements, which got him involved in a very interesting um, process of investigating a sanitary sewer system installation. So I'm thinking on his way home from work, he would look over at this construction site, kind of like I do sometimes, and he noticed that the contractor was installing materials that he felt may not be um, in accordance with the specifications for the product, project that the Homewood, Illinois, had hired that contractor to do. And he went to the board and he said, hey, um, I don't think they're doing this work correctly. And he did a series of tests. And through those series of tests, he was able to show that the work was not um, in accordance with the contract that ended up going to court. In fact, it ended up going to the Illinois uh, Supreme Court. Uh, the city of Homewood won each court case as it was appealed, and it ended up uh, with the contractor having to redo a lot of defective work that was installed um, during the, the process. There's a newspaper article from the Homewood News um, talking about the incident. This particular newspaper was in very delicate condition, so that's why it's kind of folded in the middle. I was taking pictures. Well, he got the job at the underwater, uh, sorry, underwriter's laboratory. In fact, at the bottom there, um, they offered him uh, $2,400 a year to go work there. He was there from 1921 to 1928, and in 1928, he wrote a letter to, I'm sorry, um, while he was there, there isn't a lot of documents in his um, boxes, um, but I do know that he spent quite a bit of time on drying and shrinkage of wood and also um, studying the behavior of materials and fire. So he did a lot of work testing um, materials, or fire testing materials. And all the techniques that he developed um, were incorporated into ASTM E5. So in 1928, he applied and was accepted to work at the Portland Cement Association where he first started doing uh, tests on materials under fire, specifically concrete masonry and, and concrete walls. And then he got involved uh, studying cement, and that's when his next three patents came around. He developed an autoclave system for testing the soundness of cement, and I believe right after he came up with this, uh, a company called Senco um, developed the product, sold it, and many cement companies started using it to test their cement. And there's the, uh, and I guess you could also use it for asphalt. Can I say that word here? Um, after that, he spent at least two or three years working on a huge study of uh, reinforcing steel. So at the time, evidently, there were many different types of reinforcing steel. And he must have collected all of them, and he ran pullout tests, pullout tests. And through that process, he was able to see what the best way to uh, make the deformations on the bar for the best results. So he ended up putting a patent in on this particular type of deformed bar, and this was the process of making that bar. He worked with, um, he ended up working with U.S. Steel and, and Carnegie um, to um, take this process um, into the industry. And he also wrote a uh, two papers on the pullout test that 
um, he did at the Portland Cement Association. And that's, a, well, actually in the boxes was that piece of rebar. And I, I just went ahead and, and threw in a picture of his documentation. So of course, didn't have computers. This looks like a spreadsheet, but it's a hand done spreadsheet. And this is one of several pages listing all the different rebars that he tested and all the, all the data that he collected. So he's able to compare all these different rebars. This is a list of the papers that he ended up working on, and you can kind of just see the history of his career in the papers that he wrote. Some of them were on the, the fire testing, and then he ended up uh, also testing uh, the steel rebar. He then moved on to testing the air content methods and wrote uh, some papers on that. In various other papers, he wrote at least 17 papers, and there's several others that are not listed here. But this is actually his list out of his documentation. Well, many of these papers got awards. This is one of the papers he wrote, published by the Portland Cement Association, that uh, he received an award for. And the, the list of awards just for him um, go on and on. And I've, I've read several of his papers, and, and they're just very well written, very concise, clear, um, very thorough. Uh, the first award he got, 1932, from ASTM for his uh, work on the, the uh, stability of walls and of concrete masonry units under fire. And then he also got the Wasson Medal from ACI uh, for his work and paper on the air content of fresh concrete. The uh, Concrete Reinforcing Institute ended up giving him an award for his work um, on the reinforcing bars. And uh, throughout the documentation, he's got all these little notes handwritten and in the corner there, um, he says, oh, by the way, I received a $500 check with this award. In 1969, after he had retired from uh, the Portland Cement Association, he was honored by ACI Committee 516 with a symposium on high-pressure steam curing, which is another area that he worked in. He was also uh, made an honorary member of ACI in 1970, nominated as an engineer of distinction in 1972, and again, that yellow note is his. Um, they put out a document uh, listing all the engineers of distinction for 1972, and his note is, well, I was going to buy, I mean, I was going to get one. In fact, I think he wrote to um, the organization that made this uh, document and, and asked them if he could have one, and they said, well, no, you got to buy it, but we'll give it to you for $23, and he's like, no, that's too much money. So this is a list of the awards that he got. As you can see, I've already mentioned some of them. There on the bottom, he uh, was awarded the Inberg Award. Um, for outstanding achievements in fire resistance research. And as I mentioned, uh, he was involved in the development and or improvement of a number of ASTMs, including um, ASTM A305, that um, was the first standard on reinforcing steel. He was also involved in ASTM C173 and 231, um, which were the standards for uh, air content of concrete, ASTM 427, um, that was uh, developed to uh, determine the moisture content of hardened concrete. And I, and I mentioned before E5, he was very involved with that development. But probably the, the most important award that he received, and he had um, several photographs from this award, was a, a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, from ASTM. It's called the Voss Award. He was given that in 1975. And it was for his distinguished work um, to the knowledge in the field of building technology. And, and these are all the photographs from that event. So um, that's just a little bit about Carl Menzel, um, the man behind the formula. Um, he did quite a bit of work for um, the uh, cement industry, the concrete industry, and the uh, building technology. If you have any questions, thank you.